Ladies and gentlemen, we're, uh, we're back with another, another podcast. And as you know, um, uh, we're trying to move the industry forward. And at uh, this time during COVID-19 and our lockdown, the main topics of conversation are uh, getting the cogs turning from a dealership point of view so that we can buy and sell cars. And I'm very fortunate to be joined by the MD or CEO of uh, the NADA, the National Automobile Dealer Association, Mark Domessa. Did I say that right, Mark? Yes, perfect. You wanted a few to get it right. <laughs> Great. All right. So uh, jumping jumping straight into it, Mark, you know, a couple of weeks ago, we uh, we found ourselves in a, in, a, in a place where car dealerships couldn't open their doors and then um, specific directions were issued, uh, or should I say specific directions were lacking. And, um, and we all jumped on the bandwagon, submitted uh, things to government and uh, requested that these specific directions were made public and uh, so that our car dealerships could open their doors and trade. Um, so two nights ago, uh, the government gazette hit uh, the wires, and um, and we find ourselves in a place now where there is a three phased um, plan to get dealerships to a hundred percent capacity. Phase one being thirty percent of staff are allowed to attend uh, the dealership. Um, phase two, sixty percent of staff, which is roughly two weeks later, and then on the eighth of June, phase three, which where the full staff complement um, are allowed to be on the dealership floor. Um, so. It looks like the cogs are turning, and it's uh, it's very good news. Um, what have you made of the uh, the process and the and the place that we find ourselves in, and and how has the uh, an NADA um, contributed to that, and um, and what do you think the um, the the challenges are? Um, thanks, George. Uh, great to be on here, and uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, yeah, look, it's been one hell of a journey for all of us. Uh, whether you're in, in NADA or you, you aren't in NADA, um, the, the stresses and the pressures in business and in, 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 the, in, the, in the automotive environment, retail environment have been hectic. Um, so, so to take you back, um, obviously during the lockdown period, uh, we, we as NADA have had to lobby and do whatever we can to get our voice heard. It's actually been quite a long process with NADA since I was chairman from um, last year when I came on um, last year, we, um, we, we, we took a, a decision to get NADA's name out there as its own independent name. So I think the industry knew who we are, our own little industry, but the, with South Africa and business and government didn't know who we are. So the first process really was to do a lot of PR and, uh, and we, we largely sort of we felt achieved that. Um, that really set us up very well coming to the lockdown because um, now we, we came to a point where we have a very, very big industry that people were aware of, um, automotive retail being 2.5% of the country's GDP, and that includes used car independence as well as um, car franchise, new car franchise dealers. So, so when it came to NAMSA, which is the traditional um, uh, association that lobbies the government, um, we a, had a, a bit of a were forced to be reckoned with and people sort of realized the, the extent of the investment that um, all of our dealers put on the table and the levels of employment and more importantly the contribution to the economy. Um, so, so really when that came to a point where, where the regulations were published initially and we were sitting in sort of level two car sales and level three for workshop, um, that would have put us only having the ability to trade as we know now after Cyril's announcement by the end of June. Exactly. Pretty much would have put minimum half industry out of business. So, so initially, we, we, as NADA, we contacted NAMS and said, listen, we need to go together. And um, this is ridiculous. So our dealers are not going to make it. Um, no, it, this is a disaster. So, so, but fortunately, we were really saved by a chap called Mike Mabasa, who heads up NAMSA, a, a relatively recent appointment with a lot of experience in lobbying of government. Um, and, and, and very fortunately, with uh, his understanding of the ways government work, uh, managed to get an in and a communication level uh, route to the DTI. So that was our first major port of call. And once he had that, he could communicate to us what government was thinking, what the DTI was thinking, and how they wanted to roll us out. Uh, it was many nights spent um, with ourselves, NAMSA, a couple of key people, and um, drafting documents, um, bouncing off ideas, pitching, getting consensus from from motor groups from dealers from from NAMSA, uh, and really having to put these all these documents together that government could approve and um, it took a hell of a long time especially you know uh, when the regulations were published on the 29th of april i think it was uh, we only actually got the directions the day before yesterday um, so even though they were approved uh, minister patel had to actually uh, confer every single one of those regulations to six other ministries 
and that's because of the Disaster Management Act. It's not because they were necessarily slow, but once they uh, agreed the regulations with ourselves, being sort of the, the, the NADA, NAMSA sort of um, uh, conglomerate, um, they then had to then agree every single one of those directions to, to six separate ministries, and they have to do it sequ sequentially and not concurrently. So you can imagine how difficult that is in the government environment. Um, and very, very luckily and fortunately, we got in because had we not got in and we'd seen Cyril's speech last night, I think a lot of us would have been very devastated. As long as we, and we all are devastated that level three hasn't um, been announced till the end of the month, but at least we got in the door. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I mean, uh, the entire industry, I think, is um, is leaping for joy in this um, in this situation. And, uh, uh, you know, many, many, many submissions uh, uh, to government. But I, I think the I think the three, you know, the three important kind of uh, organizations, or should I say the two parts of the, the important organizations are the industry bodies, which is yourself in NADA and, uh, and NAMSA. Um, um, and then and then the businesses that submitted the uh, uh, the proposals to government and an auditor Trader was one of them. We, you know, we took the we took the consumer view and uh, and proved to government that uh, that there was and still is consumer demand, high levels of consumer demand. So so we find ourselves in a place where I think uh, um, you know it's a it's a positive outcome. Um, um, you know, we're always going to want more. Um, but uh, but Mark, what are the challenges? What uh, what haven't uh, uh, or what hasn't been thought about? And uh, you know, what are the what are the next things on the table? Because right now, car dealers are under the impression they can trade which they can um but there are some hurdles uh, you know like licensing yeah. departments yeah i mean this is the bit that's sort of a bit disappointing and, and, and dealers are being a bit hamstrung you know the reality is we've been gazetted into law that we can trade under the restrictions and directions of phase one phase two phase three that i think everyone knows and and, and obviously we are um, we have to comply with the covid 19 um, health requirements uh, in our dealerships that you know we have to have a safe covid 19 health environment which we could talk a bit about later but i'm not going to talk about that now and um, but the big big problem is that it, it's in the gazette we're allowed to trade and what was also gazetted was the fact that the licensing authorities need to be up and running uh, and the test centers need to be up and running and and unfortunately from the department of transport they have issued. The, they have uh, told us that they will have in no way, shape, or form be able to be ready before the first of June, which is um, which is really, really difficult. I mean, you know, so that the, the DTR has given us the ability to trade, but they actually haven't in a way. So, so we now have a major challenge. Um, and once again, the guys like yourselves, the consumer, uh, other types of businesses, actually more so than NADA and NAMSA and the IDA and all these people, need to continue to put pressure on the, de on the Department of Transport because I don't really believe that that's acceptable. Um, today is, I mean, what is the date? It's the 14th, 14th yeah. uh, of May. And, um, and the reality is that it doesn't take 16 days to get those departments go yeah um but i know government news slowly, but the reality is that uh that the independent uh, test centers are all friend, independent businesses those can get going really very very quickly yeah i feel um and and the the licensing authorities um they can really i'm sure get going a lot sooner than that yeah um you know the reality is that you know used car dealers cannot deal with stock car which is a which is which is a requirement by law yeah um and and you can't actually ride drive a road with, and road with your vehicle on the road so so we're going to have to look at some potential workarounds on this but um yeah it, it, it is a bit disappointing that the that this element has been slowed up um, and is a big challenge so we how do you talk about some Mm -hmm. Sorry, Mark, but uh, so how do dealers then operate in this kind of environment? Because if it takes another two weeks for licensing departments to open, which has kind of taken us to the first of June, um, um, how do they operate um, over the next two weeks? Is it is it really just more of the same in terms of the last two weeks, or are there workarounds from a licensing department point of view, or should I say, from a temporary license point of view, um, um, or are licenses on the vehicles windscreen still valid? So it's a good thing, you know, it's quite interesting, George. I think uh, permits are now going to become the new cigarettes and alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> you know, these things are now well, the price is going to go up. If you have a thousand permits in your backyard somewhere, I think you'd be smiling pretty. But um, let's just focus a bit on the prize. I, I, think, I think the reality is what this process has shown is we have to try to be vigilant and, and do everything within the bounds of the laws we can. There are some, um, let's just say, um, uh, strong rumors that the banks are trying to help us as dealers in the sense that they are saying okay on the used car side uh, and, and hopefully the banks you know you must, i would suggest any used car dealer go speak to their bdo speak to the bank and go listen what is the story are you able to pay out if i sell a car 
um, and, and the car hasn't been roadworthy. So I think the banks are going to try and take some view on that. Yeah. And there is some murmurings on that. I'm not saying there is. Uh, so I'm not, please don't quote the NADA chairman. But uh, the banks are trying to help on that level. That doesn't leave the fact that the car now is, let's say the bank in theory does, they all sit and get together and say, okay, let's take a view. As long as the, 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 um, the license is not expired, uh, and, and, uh, then, and we'll, we'll then pay out a deal based on the fact that the car can't be roadworthy. Um, so let's, that, let's tick that box. The next box we have is the fact that a customer is now driving a car on the road that hasn't gone through the roadworthy process. Once yeah. again, he's in contravention of the Road Traffic Safety Act. So uh, the other area then, there's two elements. One is government and the other is the insurance companies. And we're going to need the insurance companies to also come to the party here. Um, I'm sure they want to write some business and they're going to have to um, invoke a few waivers um, to get this process going in the next two weeks with some kind of you know, 14 day extension or something. Um, once again, there are rumors that uh, potential insurance companies are coming to our assistance. I don't know. I, mean, I, I don't have anything in writing, yes. but I think those two elements are, are the first one. And I think, George, the other element is then um, uh, Minister Fakila Mbula is going to have to also then extend waivers on, 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 on those cars. As long as those cars are in a roadworthy condition, maybe we can uh, promote the fact that those cars must have a proper safety check by an accredited RMI workshop um, and the customer can sign the waiver. Maybe that's a bit of a workaround. But these are all pretty much work in progresses at this stage. Yeah. Um, I know the banks are trying to look at it and, and we are all as, as an industry trying to ask these questions and help. And, and hopefully that can have some kind of work around. It's not fair that the dealers, especially the used car trade, are sitting with depreciating assets on their floor um, and they're losing value every day and they can't liquidate these vehicles. And they can't even trade with each other. That's the other big problem. I mean, the reality is you want to, as an independent dealer, sell a car to a big group the groups have those policies that they say, unless the papers are in our hands and latest and whatever, really, you know, you're not going to be able to liquidate that cost. So I think the industry is going to have to come together with some kind of way of working in a mandated uh, waiver. And if that could happen, then things can start moving and turning. The, economy, the car economy can start turning. I don't know what you think, George. Well, I mean, my, my, my sense is is that uh, if that license disc is uh, is valid on the windscreen of the car, right. um, you know, it can drive on the South African roads unless there's something I'm missing. Um, and, uh, and and I've had, uh, you know, lots of customers deliver cars in the last day, uh, you know, and um, based on that, uh, that delivery, um, I'm assuming that the cars that they are delivering have uh, valid license discs on them. Um, when it comes yeah. to the expiry of those license discs, that's another story. But um, you know, maybe that'll turn around within the next two weeks. Two weeks is a short space of time, but it's very interesting for me that um, that while these government gazetted documents are out in the in the public domain, um, the real ability to trade is still difficult for uh, for car dealers. And um, you know, I'm I'm hoping that Minister Fakile um, does something about this very very quickly. And uh, and 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 I don't think we should. Um, you know, we should uh, uh, just uh, just t- take a step back. We should provide uh, potential solutions um, and help the government to to make these decisions sooner rather than later, which is what we're all doing. I agree. I mean, you know, on the new car side, and you know, we always think about cars. We've got to think about commercial vehicles, um, especially heavy commercials. I cannot believe, I, you know, there's a problem here. So, so if you issue a commercial vehicle on with a permit, um, the reality is that those vehicles aren't allowed to take a load. Yeah. Uh, to tow with a taxi, we show a taxi on a permit, they can't take people. Now, I, I just, I, I cannot believe that the minister would outlaw those vehicles on the road. Let's say a food transport company that has to take, there's a true essential service, a taxi is a true t- essential, essential service, um, security companies, all of those things. I mean, if a vehicle has a permit, in this, you know, for now, the minister has to waive those, those concessions or has to give us a concession on that. I cannot believe you would pull over um, a Woolworths truck or a pick and pay truck or a checkers truck trying to take food to people that need food. Yep. Ditto, what about you know all these companies that are doing food parcels? Um, so, so the reality is that some kind of sanity has to prevail. Yeah. He can't get his licensing centers up. And, and I do feel for them because those are very highly congested areas. Yes. And you can't imagine that a licensing employee would want to rush back to work right now uh, because you know, the problem there is all of those environments are very high, high, high hotspots. Yes. You know, unfortunately, infections are happening in places like, you know, those, I mean, can imagine, uh, I wouldn't be too excited, but nonetheless, um, you know, they've got to get their protocols in place and, and some sanity's got to prevail on, 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 on the rules on new cars on the road and new cars on the road. 
Well, I mean, let's hope that, uh, um, you know, it's taken two weeks to get the special um, uh, special directions out um, uh, from government. And that, I, I would imagine, would, was the hardest hurdle to to jump. Opening the licensing department um, hopefully isn't as big a hurdle to, to get over. So, so hopefully we see some movement on this, um, you know, within days. Um, but uh, to wait till the 1st of June is just putting our, um, our industry, I think, another step back. When you have a situation where, um, you know, we're experiencing increased searches on our site we've had the highest uh, uh the highest searches since the 10th of may um at 1.3 million wow. searches a day um which tells me that when the consumer gets wind of the car dealerships opening um uh, they are excited they want to go and trade um trade down trade across trade up um the consumer there is appetite for people to trade and uh, i'm not sure if uh, uh, if um, if you're aware mark but um, um on the 29th of april the government um uh, announced food delivery for restaurants um and based on that uh, we saw a um a doubling of searches for vans and buckies um, which tells me that uh, uh, South Africans are rearing to go. No, people aren't just sitting at home, taking it easy and having a holiday. Uh, you know, people are rearing to go. So there is demand out there. Um, licensing departments do have to open. And, um, um, you know, we're nearing the end of this uh, this particular podcast. So uh, so thanks very much for joining, uh, joining me, Mark. Um, um, any final thoughts? Um, yeah, look, I, I think we just need to do what we can and work as closely together as possible. Uh, we, we are on, on a knife edge, and um, if we can just start getting things going and get some money in the bank and start turning turning our stock, it's going to be a lifeline for us. We we are in, um, in, in quite serious trouble here, yeah. but uh, there is a way out. And I'll just say, guys, just you know, watch your expenses, watch your costs, start turning your stock. Um, and, and, and try to trade and keep communicating with all the WhatsApp groups and, and all your associations and, and, and hopefully we'll get there. It's, just, it's very, very tough. Though. But thank you, George. Appreciate being on. And I'll, um, anytime I can help, uh, I'll help. Well, let's uh, let's work together, and uh, and and I think that's what we've been doing, and that's what's gotten us to where we are right now. You know, uh, uh, competition at this point in time is uh, is not the thing to focus on. The thing to focus on is working together to get our industry moving. So uh, so thanks. That's uh, Mark Domisa. I hope I said that right. The chairman of the NADA in South Africa. Really good to have you on, and uh, hopefully we can uh, we can see you again, and um, soon maybe have a cup of coffee in person when. The, when all this uh, blows over. Yeah, we love it. Thank you. Good stuff. Thanks, Mark.